Right oh, no, guys, so it's now Monday morning. This print we started on Friday. So fit it up and see how it works. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right, got the rad in for test fit. Got all the support off this. It's in the bin. It's a fine space in there. Not bad, not bad. Angle's pretty good. That second prototype might be a bit even better. Mm. I mean, maybe it's even too high, the second one. I'd say that's pretty good. It's pretty good angle though. Yeah. <clears throat> Still plenty of clearance there for a condenser. Right, oh guys, it does need a bit of a design change. The inlet or the outlet of the OTR is, uh, is actually too high. So I do actually need to angle that back down a bit. So it needs to be perpendicular with the filter face is what I need, uh, which this one's a bit over perpendicular. And the VCM one's a bit under perpendicular, which is the problem with that one. So a bit of a redesign, uh, but uh, like I was showing you as well, but it's going to be a nicer piece anyway, because they've got curves and stuff a lot better down pat on the Fusion software now and stuff. So hopefully the next uh, prototype will be a bit cleaner as well as fit better. So we'll prototype it again, change it a little bit. So a few more dramas. I'm just redesigning our OTR at the moment, which is all sweet, but a few other dramas that we have been having. Uh, we've got a VY condenser in here. And as you can see, the fitting for the AC line is quite a bit different. Uh, and we needed to run this with the VZ radiator to make everything work. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately the VT condenser of the AC line is completely different. So uh, probably our best solution is just to buy a complete VY AC line assembly. Uh, but unfortunately our supplier is out of stock nationally of those. So uh, we're gonna have to get onto our supplier and see what we can get, see what we can get hold of. But that would be the best solution is to completely just replace it all with a VY one. It looks as though the firewall fitting's the same and the compressor Manifold is the same, so the VY one should just, in theory, go straight in the car. We just gotta try and get hold of one. So anyway, not a very simple exercise going to VZ radiator. It's a, a very, actually a very complicated in-depth exercise to do. So this is our latest pro prototype of the uh, of the OTR, which we uh, we changed the, the angles of everything a little bit more, um, and just overall made it just a much nicer, cleaner design. Like that is just a lot nicer and neater and better looking uh, than this was. So, you know, that just wasn't that great. Wasn't that good. That is just much, much nicer to look at. Uh, so as well as that, I actually tried printing it a different way. So um, I printed it without all the supports because it's everything's angled a lot better. And there's a lot better angles. I figured the printer would be able to actually print out from the base uh, without needing all the supports like this one did because there's so many steps in this one. So just a design flaw that really limited our ability to print it, whereas this one, I printed it without all of the supports, which means it used much less material and uh, printed way, way faster. Uh, this was only about a day and a half uh, as opposed to nearly three days for that one. So, so yeah, all around a lot better when you know what you're doing with this design software. Um, and yeah, I'm certainly getting a lot better at it and enjoying the process. But yeah, the print's finished, so let's go, go have a look. Woo wee, not bad. So you can see we didn't even use half a spool. Much better as far as material. No, it worked out pretty good. Let's get it out of the printer and have a gaze at it. Woo. Ooh, all right, get all this cleaned up. Just a much nicer looking piece. Um, much closer to what would be our final final looking, looking piece. So, because I was in such a hurry, I didn't have time to actually do the cutout for the filter element. Uh, so I just printed that solid for this one, but Again, it was just to sort of get the critical dimensions and angles and everything right, which I'm pretty sure this one should be uh, a lot closer than that other one. So. so there's a really good picture of the difference in the angles there. So, oh, sorry, I didn't just bloody move that. So with those outlets basically sitting flush, you can see how different the angle is of each OTR. So should be a lot closer there, I think. Right, oh guys, so we finally got the VT back on the hoist. We finally got the panel van off it for long enough to get it sorted. So starting to get the new exhaust system back in, or in, I should say, now. Uh, so our uh, Black Ops performance exhaust system. Uh, like I've already said, really excited to have this system on this car, like the high compression six liter with these headers, which we already know sound very unique. This thing's gonna sound, I think, really, really good. So um, just sort and getting that in at the moment. Been working further on our development of our uh, over the radiator intake. Got a pretty good idea how we're going to produce it now as well. So that's all coming up Millhouse. So um, just got the last, or what I expect is going to be our last prototype. I've just loaded it into the printer to print over the weekend. Um, I can't remember where we ended up getting to 
before we had to get it off the hoist as far as showing what we were up to. That's our second prototype and uh, all I've done is built off this a little bit uh, for the next one. I haven't changed it too much. I've left all the critical dimensions the same, but there was just a few little revisions that I'd have made. Uh, and in the meantime, I have had to go down and talk to our boys there at Coast Creations and Sunny Coast Makerspace. Uh, and because I had to go down to get some stuff for the HQ um, last week. And I did have you know, a chance to actually chat to those boys about our options for actual manufacture for this part as well. And uh, basically it is going to be a 3D printed part, one-offs. It's gonna make it expensive if you do wanna buy one, um, just because of the time and, and what's involved in 3D printing one. But as far as actually setting up the tooling to mold one, it's not worth it. I just can't see there being enough demand for this product. It'll only suit VT to VZ and only suit these high-rise manifolds. Um, I feel like most VT to VZs that are gonna have these sorts of manifolds on them are gonna be boosted anyway. They're not gonna use an OTR. Uh, so there's just there's a few reasons that I just don't think we're gonna have enough demand to set up the tooling to mold them. Um, so for that reason, they are just gonna be 3D printed. The revisions I've made to this with what's in the printer at the moment is obviously um, this scallop. There's no point for it being there. All it's doing is lowering the roof of the intake. This is the high point anyway. So if there's a problem with the bonnet, it's gonna hit here. So what I've done is basically bridge from this point back back down to this corner. So there's no scallop in it like that anymore. It sort of comes straight down and sort of raises raises this roof quite a bit, which should allow uh, a bit nicer airflow up into the actual OTR like that. Uh, so with, being, with raising that roof quite a bit, what I've actually done is just taken a little bit more off this cut, which is just gonna give us a little bit more room to sit this down a bit lower on the radiator. Uh, and hopefully give us a, definitely enough room for this bonnet to fit, so. Obviously, if you're running one of these intakes on one of these cars, you're running a cowl anyway, uh, but obviously we're getting pretty close to where the latch and stuff is with this OTR, so um, as much as a cowl's gonna have to be run anyway and you're gonna be pretty much covering it, I still want to make sure that the bonnet is gonna shut, it's gonna latch and do all that, so. So yeah, as you can see, I'm really starting to get my head around this product, uh, this this um, program a lot better now. Um, than I was before. Rapidly improving, which is exciting. So this one I decided to print the other side. So yeah, as you can see there, I've sort of made, filled in a lot of this, raised that roof for that quite a bit, and then just scaled a little bit more out of there, and then actually put the cut in for the filter. So that's in the printer at the moment. So this is what it looks like as one piece, what we're dealing with. This is the new, new one. Looking pretty good. All right guys, so aside from all these issues we've been having with the printer, Rex has actually been cracking along with the actual car, as you can see. Starting to get a lot of the front end together a bit more. We ended up just having to order a new uh, trans cooler complete kit from VCM. They wouldn't just sell us just the mount kit separately. So we ended up just having to order a whole new kit, but not the end of the world. It is what it is. Um, getting the rad fans sorted, new plug, all that. Uh, we've ordered a VZ radiator cap, which we didn't have. Um, so trying to get all this VZ nonsense sorted. He's been trying to track down the correct AC lines that we need as well. Uh, that's probably gonna be one of the holdups as well as this OTR at this stage. Uh, as well as obviously trying to get this, um, like the correct length throttle cable. Uh, but anyway, he's also got the rest of the Black Ops exhaust system just about installed. It's all underneath the car, which I'll show you next time it goes up. Use, and use flick that ignition to on, please. Flick ignition to on. And uh, like fluids in the car, he's primed up oil pressure, all the rest of that. So, Wait. again. Uh, not a very good reg. Regulator? Yeah. What regulator is it? Just whatever was on the car. So at the moment Rex is just um, trying to get the fuel system sorted out and primed. Uh, we filled it with full of E85. So it's ready, it's, you know, it's getting getting pretty close. Apart from this OTR and a few other little bits and bobs. It's just gonna hold us up, but. Alrighty, so Rex has done the new trans cooler kit. We're ready to go. Pretty much ready to hit this thing in the guts, start her up. Obviously a few things to finish off still. Still got to sort of AC, uh, you know, catch a can, all that sort of thing. But the main thing at the moment, uh, while we're still got to wait to get this OTR and stuff sorted anyway, was just to get this thing started so that it could run and drive and move so that we can use the hoist for other stuff when we want to. Because this has just been painted, doesn't have a bonnet. It's got to be able to be move into, it moved in and out um, if we want it to be, you know, mobile and want to use this hoist. So let's see how it sounds.
All right, guys. So the issue ended up being the coil pack wiring. The sublooms to relocate the coils were wired wrong. Um, we didn't wire them. We just installed them. Out of all eight, two of them were actually on the right coil. So that ended up being the issue, which is all sweet. Sounds cranky as. That's what high compression, really, really angry cam, and this awesome black hog exhaust. It just sounds really, really good. So for those of you who missed the last episode, it is a um, so it's a six liter, really high compression. What ended up static comp? Ah, uh, twelve point six. Twelve point six to one comp. Um, iron block six liter, with a crow cams twelve fifty three, which is a. Uh, 245, 262, 615, 615 lift on a 114. So. You go, it's basically, you go to the very end of the list of cross yeah. shelf cams and that's it. So I don't know who picked it, but they just went for the biggest one that they possibly could. So if you missed the first episode, basically this car, oh, wasn't even this car at the time. Uh, dude sent us engine, LS1, and basically killed a rod and a piston and actually a ball and a liner uh, and a block in the end. So. Because the block was pretty much ruined, we decided to go iron block six liter because he eventually wants to make some big power. But basically we were dealing with a whole heap of parts that were already supplied. Uh, so it was eagle crank, eagle rods, which we don't normally use. This isn't stuff we normally use, but it was supplied, so we used it. And it was originally marl uh, pistons, which were just flat tops for the LS1. Obviously, because we went to six liter going iron block, we had to get new pistons anyway, which worked in our favor because we were able to go really, really high compression. Because uh, well, that's what we wanted, and it's what you sort of need with a cam like this. You can't really run I, a cam like this. I'd already of... said straight off the bat. Um, Different before, pistons. Yeah, I already said that I wasn't going to use the flat tops because it would have been an absolute dog of a combo. So. Yeah. We're always, I told him straight up that he can keep the flat tops for putting some comp in it. And then yep. it, obviously after that, we've learned the block wasn't worth fisting, yeah. fixing, so we went six liter and here we are. Um, so, and then obviously supplied holy high rise. Um, we supplied the rocket, rocket covers and everything else and built the engine, etc. cetera. Um, these heads are like a cow flow aftermarket cathedral port head. We tried to get them CNC ported, but they wouldn't touch them because they couldn't guarantee the integrity of the port wall because they didn't know how thick it was because they're aftermarket. So they weren't happy to run their CNC program through, which is totally fair enough. So they're not CNC ported. They're supposed to be like the equivalent of a 243. Uh, we weren't very happy with these heads, honestly. Caused a lot of issues. Rex had to do a lot of fixing. I did, I had to do a lot of work to um, get them to be any kind of usable. Uh, so yeah, that's how we ended up. So the heads are, are okay now. Rex had to do a lot of fixing though, but we're, we're not sure how well they're gonna perform. But apart from that, we really, really like this combo. Uh, yeah, big compression, E85, big cam, and hopefully eventually some uh, spray, a little bit of spray. Mm. Woohoo! look at that. A successful print, and I must say it's actually cooking. So all those issues I had with this printer and all the settings and stuff I had to find, uh, the printer's actually really printing really well at the moment with the settings that we found. So stoked with that. Super happy to get this out of the print bed, see how it fits. All right, so with it next to the old one, you can really see the bit of a difference in the, um, basically in the shape and the profile. So as you can see, this roof is much higher, um, which just gives it a much better flow, I reckon. And then obviously a bit more of a cutout in that center. There we go, so yeah, you can see how this one it took a fair bit more out of that, but it sort of doesn't affect the flow path as badly. So the flow path still seems pretty good with that higher roof. So, yeah, I think we should be onto something with this one. Because even though the roof's been raised to come up and meet this a bit better, uh, it's overall going to sit a lot lower in the actual engine bay over the radiator. So, I think we should be pretty good. Let's get it in the car and have a look. There you go. That's how it's going to be. Old versus new. Or V V2 versus V3, I should say. Gets all that big mouth up there. And yeah, still got to cut. Same with the VCM ones, got to cut this bit of shrouds out so it'll, it'll drop down a little bit lower. So most of that um, most of that mouth will be down further a bit more for the grill, which is the, the idea. Good angles, a little bit of straight in there. Boom, what a time, stoked. So I'll try and go down and see the boys local there at Clueless Creations today. Um, I'll see if he's going to be there today because I've got to go down anyway. And uh, we'll start talking about what we can actually do to get this thing finalised and printed. Right, oh guys, so a couple of days later, Rex has just been, when he's had time uh, with this thing, cruising through, just making heat shields for the uh, coil packs, like just 
lots of little jobs like that that actually take a heap of time. So he's put heaps of heat shielding around all of that. Uh, we know from the Statesman that these mild pipes do get quite hot. Um, and just before he puts that down, I'll show you a good look at that exhaust. Hey, that Black Ops Performance exhaust all in there. Looking awesome. So. And sounding great, as you heard. So we know from the Stato that these pipes being mild, they do get really like, quite hot. Uh, so Rex put a lot of effort into making a lot of heat shielding and stuff for the stuff that's around the pipes. Making sure we're not gonna have any issues with any of that. Um, just double checking fuel system, everything else. So uh, it's all looking pretty good. Basically trying to get this OTR sorted uh, and trying to talk to the boys um, about getting it produced and what to print it out of and what we can do with it. Rightio, boys and girls, as you can see, club is on the dyno. I wasn't here yesterday. I was down the coast trying to get our OTR and stuff all underway. I had a few meetings, a lot of things to go pick up. I actually picked up the new AC lines for this thing as well. So we've got some VZ V8 AC lines, which should just completely replace the VT ones and all work. Uh, so what they told me, they're not talking about them. They'd definitely be white. Well, they told me they were definitely out of a VZ. They're an idiot. He's an idiot. Comes from upbringing. Parents are probably idiots too. Anyway. Regardless, as you can see, we've get, set this up as just a intake for tuning purposes. Um, and Rex went through with the tune. Uh, the he, Rex isn't super happy with some noises the diff's making and some things that it's doing. Uh, but apparently, the owner just had the diff done. So, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> it is what it is. But we've left it on the dyno so that we could get some runs on film, um, which I'll chuck in now. So we can, yeah, get some on camera. So you can hear what this thing sounds like, this combo, this exhaust. I wanted to get some, some runs on film before Rex pulled it back off the diner. Cause I didn't like the fact that I wasn't here for the tune. But anyway, it's been through a whole tune. It is tuned, the gearbox survived. So that's a good one, so. So we'll chuck him some runs and we'll have a chat about what the results are here. All right, so we've got to restart everything again because only 10% of the time when you turn everything on, the diner will actually communicate to the comms hub since we got the software all set, it's very frustrating. Anyway, while we're doing that, I'll talk to you about what's going on with the OTR. So I went and had a chat to, I had a bit of a meeting with Luca at there at Clueless Creations, who is the genius behind making sure that all of our crazy ideas end up coming to life. Uh, all the, at least the 3D plastic ones, anyway. Um, so we ended up deciding uh, that OTR, where I had a split top and bottom. He was looking at the design, I took him down the prototype and it was sort of decided that it, um, it probably could be printed in one piece. And given that it could be printed in one piece, uh, and we do have options to protect the underside from heat, we decided to try and just print it in one piece in PET. So that's the plan at the moment, is a complete one piece PET OTR. And we will use some of that gold reflective uh, sheet that you can put or stick on stuff. Freaking hang on. Log onto this, see if it'll communicate. So there's that gold reflective stuff that we can stick on the bottom. There's even that perforated heat shielding that we can make a heat shield for it if we like. Although it's obviously gonna sit over the radiator and the radiator is going to get to around sort of that 90 to 100 degrees and probably be fairly constant. Um, the other side of that is obviously being the intake while the radiator is that hot, there's gonna be a lot of air mass moving through the piece. So through the inside, there's gonna be a lot of air mass that's gonna be cooling the, the top side of that quite a bit. So if there's some sort of protection from the heat coming up from underneath, plus all of that air mass moving over the top, um, we're hoping that it shouldn't be a problem. But we'll give it a go as one piece in PET. Hopefully it doesn't sort of warp um, and start to sort of suck in on itself. As long as that's all good, we're all sweet and it's happy days. Uh, obviously if we do start to have issues like that, well then we need to go back to plan A and split the top and bottom and come up with some sort of carbon um, infused or, or carbon, uh, what would you call it, hybrid print for the bottom half that's going to deal with a bit more heat, but uh, we're pretty confident that it's going to be okay. So we'll give it a go.
460 at the wheels, aspirated. Six liter uh, auto. It's not too bad, but when you consider the fact of, you know, the size of the cam, the compression, the fact we're on E85, we should have been making quite a bit more power than that. Um, so it's very much, obviously, these heads. These heads are what's holding this combo back 100%, which is what we knew was gonna be the fact, you know, the, the, the matter of the fact from the very beginning. We are pretty confident that with some, you know, some good CNC ported 799s that this combo would be making 500. Um, or at least very, very close to, which obviously, you know, for an aspirated six litre, that's pretty staunch. Um, pretty happy with that, obviously. 600 off the bottle, and then, you know, potential for spray down the track. That's, that's a pretty solid little combo. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, sounds awesome. Goes well enough. But uh, yeah, for this sort of compression, the 85, this sort of cam, if these heads were breathing properly, it certainly would help quite a lot. So regardless, 460, still nothing to, uh, you know, snarl that for what it is, cathedral heads. I suppose the other option is um, ditch the, the 799 idea completely and just go to rectangles. Uh, would also obviously help quite a lot too. So that's the other option is um, don't even bother with 799s and go straight to some rectangle port heads, which would help even more. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's pretty much the, re the results here. Uh, that's what we ended up with. We're pretty happy with how it's come together, considering the limitations of obviously having to use what was provided. Uh, as you saw through the build, there were a few little bits and bobs that we sort of refused to use just because we didn't like what they were. Um, like we said, a lot of this stuff wasn't our first um, preference for stuff to use, but even then we're, we still wouldn't put just crap in an engine. Um, so a lot of it we, we persisted with, but some of it just got yeeted. Anyway, about the last thing really is to finish off our OTR setup which I am hoping will be done early next week. Um, and I would like just to do, obviously a little bit of testing with that OTR prior to the car leaving. So I was just checking to make sure that um, the throttle not getting completely all the way open wasn't causing any issues, but yeah, no, no difference with me holding it wide open. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the Rex has got a, so much time in it. Like it's a big cam, but um, yeah, so much timing in this thing. I really just think it's starving for air. I think it just really needs more port, more head. So that's what we'd really like to see with this thing in future is, yeah, just CNC rectangle ports would be great. Just some stock rectangle ports would be great. Some CNC 799 243s or something, that'd be great. I don't know, just, just some better heads on this thing would be awesome. And then, um, yeah, a better gearbox and some giggle gas. But anyway, it's not over yet, still got to get this OTR sorted. None of those runs, like, yeah, 458 is still our highest number, so that's just all it's going to do. Which, like I said, it's not, it's not like it's, it's not, nothing. It's not like yeah, that. it's half decent, but it's just, we know that there is so much more potential in this combo with some decent heads, so it makes it upsetting. But anyway, we'll tune back in when we get some OTR sorted. Uh, but yeah, also got to get the you know, AC lines in, got to get the AC sorted out and stuff. There's still a fair bit to go with. All right, boys and girls, <laughs> here she is. <laughs> Oh, stop. The final stop product. It. So I've tried to put, I might have to just trim that right back, but. Just underneath. Yeah, yeah I'll, go th I'll go through with you as basically the process of how this happened and why it's ended up the way it has, but. Just for, for the minute, just look at it. Just, just look at you it. Just don't see it. Just look at it. Oh. There it goes. Oh. Oh, it's so nice. Just give Rex a minute to get this over this, this tight. Might have to spit what? on it. Why is it scary? Spit on it. Everybody spit on Meg! Stop! Stop! I don't know how strong this sun. Um... It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. Okay. Sorry, right, I got it. I got it on there. <laughs> <laughs> oos, oos. You have to charge a lot for it now. Mmm. So I need a bit of a longer bit of silicon to join it. And we'll have to do the old <laughs> trim. Yeah, now. we've got to trim, we've still got to trim the fan shroud here so it just sits down a little bit more. Which will tilt it back a little bit, but I don't think it'll, uh, don't think it'll bother it too well, much. Well, the other thing is we can use one of the concertina ones from BCM if we have to, which might work a bit That better. might be a better idea, to be honest, because... It probably is. It suits it suits the application a bit better. And it's easier to get it in and out. Yeah. And they have the, um... Port. The little port for the, for the IAT. The IAT, which is... Obviously moment, needed. Just, just hanging there for now. Yeah. So that's probably the best thing, is to use one of those concertina ones from BCM. That we've got a port for IAT and everything's happy. But anyway, just look at it. Look how good it looks. See, um, if we were to print up another one of those, oh, 
just, just. Sorry, sorry. Another one of those, shot. another one of those fittings you made for a dash ten. Yep. And um, we could plumb back this yeah. catch can, that catch can into the back side of there. <clears throat> yeah. So I actually I made up a fitting the other day, and it, it's going to be in a different video, but um, I wanted to put or we'll make a fitting so that you could put like a dash ten fitting into silicon. Now a lot of people make them with barbs, Raceworks make them, I think Aeroflow makes one as well where it's a barb, and the idea is solid. They're only small. They're only small, um, but you, you drill the hole in your, your silicon, the fitting goes in from the back side, and then the nut goes in the front and locks it onto the silicon, and then you have a nipple in the silicon, and that makes sense because obviously that way nothing can be sucked down in the inside, and I sort of just took that exact same principle and made this in the 3D printer, um, which is essentially the exact same idea but AN10. So I used AN12 size nuts, I scaled the nuts up to AN12 size so there's a bit more area to seal on the silicon and I needed this for a different car. So I made one of these and we figured if we wanted to plumb the catch can here yeah, the back into the intake, uh, we could actually use one of these fittings, um, print one, put it on the bottom somewhere, put it somewhere and then actually plumb that with fittings back to the intake which would draw through the catch can, back through the intake, as they should for emissions and for a lot of reasons also, so that you don't get that fumey smell, smell in the car. Uh, burns out that fumey smell. Um, but anyway, so that's a possibility. But anyway, just look how good it looks. Stoked with it. Uh, now, about the only design change that I really need to make uh, after having this back. Um, so I had this plate uh, laser cut by my boy Matt there that works at Triple Eight Racing. So he actually laser cut this at Triple Eight Racing. So cheers, Triple Eight Racing. Um, and what I've noticed after actually mounting it to the piece with these screws uh, is being two mil alley but being completely flat, once it's mounted, the long side is too flimsy. So you can see how much that's got flex in it, which, reckon, is, which is no good. I wonder if we could put that in our pan brake and just put a, a bit of fold just put a bit of a fold in the top that'd be enough it'd be enough but do that top and bottom what i thought was um if we just made this plate a little bit bigger a little bit taller um so the top and bottom yeah and, have and basically fold just over. fold it over the top just a little bit it's only going to be like a two two mil fold just so that it gives it an angle which is going to hold it sort of in the center whereas being flat it's too flimsy and it's the same on the bottom if it was just a bit longer and had just a little bit of a curve around the bottom of the otr it'd just help it sort of hold that, that filament, that filter in a lot better. Uh, whereas once those bolts are tight, it does does bulge in the center and does sort of allow for probably not what we want to happen. So that's a little design change that has to make. But for now, the actual OTR itself seems to be really, really good. And it's it printed pretty well in one piece. We can't argue with that. And yeah, overall, what a unit. The only one in the world as far as we know. One of one ATM. So. It is very cool that we are able to do this. We obviously couldn't do it with the help of our boy there at Clueless Creations, Luca. Um, so definitely head over to his Instagram and give him a follow. He does some really, really cool stuff. He has some really, really cool gear and he can help us out with some really, really cool stuff like this. So really, really awesome and absolutely stoked with the final result. So. Rightio guys, so here we go. The final install of the Onsong Performance OTR setup. So. This is the, the final install. I ended up using a VCM boot from a VCM mathless plastic OTR for these cars. Just to allow that extra flexibility, but also it's got the IAT port already in the boot. So just got to zip tie that bit of wiring up there and tidy that up. But uh, with this fan shroud cutout, that is sitting down as low as it can. As you can see, it's quite a bit lower than it was. And you're getting all of that through this hole up into that intake, which is exactly what you want to happen. So um, given where it is and how it's sitting, I'm not even gonna bother with the L brackets that I was gonna make. It's just not necessarily, I don't think. It's not going anywhere. Um, and it actually is sitting quite nice in there. The profile, I probably couldn't have got it really any better if I tried, so uh, I am really, really happy with this piece. So uh, I did end up this flat piece in the front, as you can see. I chucked it in the pan brake and just put a bit of angle on the long sides. That just gives that just give it, gives it a lot more uh, integrity on the long side. So that's our final install of our OTR system. And yeah, for all intents and purposes, should work really well. Looking at the slope um, from the intake down to where the bonnet would be, I don't think you could sort of get it any better as far as clearance with a cow. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with the final product. Stoker went through to actually, went through all the effort to make it happen. And yeah. Awesome. Awesome bit of kit, custom made, start to finish.
I love it. Anyway, so about the last thing we've got to do is put our new seals on the manifold for the AC lines for the compressor, uh, and then have this thing, the AC gassed up. Uh, we need to do another dyno session. Uh, Rex wants to do some different injector data, playing with some dead times and stuff, and playing with some injector timing to try and get some low speed um, and low, low inertia stuff sorted out better. Uh, also, while it's obviously on the dyno, I want to do some checks with temperature and see how this holds up to another dyno session. Um, and yeah, after that, this car, once cold start and stuff sorted, is uh, is ready to go. So. All right, boys and girls, we're finally back on the dyno. Yeehaw, really good stuff. So as you can see, we've plumbed in our catch can. It is plumbed into our OTR. We ended up, what we ended up doing, the fitting that I made, I tried printing it, tried annealing it, tried a few different things, but at the end of the day, we just weren't super comfortable with it because of it being still redeployed in plastic. Uh, the potential for it to actually just break and the nut to snap off in the intake, which obviously can cause a problem. Uh, here's one that did happen earlier on. And obviously if that gets sucked in through the intake, that's gonna be an unhappy time. Um, just the risk is probably minimal, but nonetheless, it's not one we wanted to take. So in this particular instance, uh, because we had so much room on the inside, uh, what we ended up doing was just buying from Raceworks an AN10 bulkhead fitting. And just inside here, there is just an AN10 end on it. Um, it's not flat, it's just an AN10 flare on the end there, but regardless, it still serves the same purpose and does the exact same thing. Um, not sort of always useful for this application or the, not, not this application, but for the application that I developed that fitting for, you can't always use a bulkhead in that instance. But I talked to some other people. I talked to Dominic there at Sunny Coast Makerspace about getting a heat made up. Same thing, um, minimum order about 30 plus tooling costs. It was too much of an outlay to get them made in billet. Uh, wasn't sure that there's gonna be enough market for it, etc. Just didn't really wanna make the outlay uh, when this pretty simple, fairly cheap fitting from Raceworks is gonna do the job. So that's what we've ended up doing. And as you can see, it's worked fine. And that's where we're at. So finally here to uh, get some run-in time on this OTR on the actual dyno. Rex will check his injector stuff that he wanted to check. And it'll be all happy day. boys and girls we're all sweet so through all that testing the yeah this otr i really don't think it's going to be a problem at all i hope that i'm right obviously only time's going to tell but there's only so much testing we can do on the dyno uh before it gets released out into the world and we just have to wait and see but that the highest temperature we literally saw that whole dyno session was 55 degrees uh, like around the back on the bottom of that otr and you know this pet it's printed at a bed temp of like 90 so you know it's printed on a bed of 90 degrees it prints it's still lot like pretty close to 230 to 250 degrees i'm pretty sure is how it prints out of the print head so you know melting point for it's pretty hot i really don't think it's going to be an issue so i'm pretty happy with that so that's this thing pretty much done in a nutshell rex is happy with the injected changes and things like that um so yeah it's finally pretty much finished we'll do one more hit at the cold start in the morning but we're good to go uh, so obviously as we talked about through this whole build series it remains to be seen how this gearbox is going to last but everyone's across that everyone's aware of uh, <laughs> that being a, a bit of a weak point of this whole thing so anyway thanks for watching as always guys it's been fun this one a lot of steep lessons a lot of things that i've learned with this 3d doing 3d software and things like that so really really good really awesome we'll see you on the next one peace out see you bye <laughs>